SQL has the ability to work with XML as well. So that way, if we're maybe receiving XML from another system, or we need to be able to send XML out the door to another system, we can do that through SQL Server. Now, before we get into other lessons covering how we're going to work with XML inside of SQL, I figured it'd be best if we turned our attention to the basics of XML, so that way we know what XML is. XML, as it turns out, stands for Extensible Markup Language. So it really should be EML rather than XML, but as we all know, Xs are just cooler than Es, so it's XML instead. When you get right down to it, XML, at its most basic, is really just a way to format a text file to format text data. That really is it. Now, why use XML? Well, XML is used to store documents, exchange information between systems, or maybe even format information for eventual display out to a user. XML in and of itself is an open standard, and it's defined by the World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C. By the way, if you want more information about XML and a lot of the surrounding technologies, you can go check out the W3C's website at www.w3.com. Org. That, of course, leads us perfectly into those surrounding technologies, one of which we're going to discuss a little bit later, which is schemas. But another one is a style sheet, which allows you to take one form of XML and convert that into something else. Maybe a text file, maybe another form of XML, or maybe actually HTML for display out to a user. An XML document is made up of a couple of main components. The first of which is what's known as an element, or sometimes known as a tag. The goal of our elements or tags is to define the structure of our data, as well as to describe the data. And that's one of the greatest benefits of XML, is the element names that we use are there to help provide what's known as metadata, or basically data about data. It's there to help define our data. Now, elements could contain text, could contain attributes, and could even contain additional elements. On the flip side, attributes are going to allow us to further describe an element. Now, the one big thing about an attribute is that an attribute is only allowed to have text data. One of the great things about XML is the fact that you can create any element and any attribute that you might want. So that way you can use this to format your data in any structure, any format that's going to be needed for your application. The catch, however, is the fact that, well, anybody else can define whatever elements whatever attributes it is that they might want. As a result, you're going to notice that XML has some rules. Those rules are defined by the standards laid out in the XML specification and are collectively known as well-formed. Whenever any application is working with an XML document, the requirement is that it be well-formed. If the document is not well-formed, meaning that it doesn't abide by the set of rules that we're going to discuss here, the application is required to simply fail out. Now, some of the most common rules about a document being well-formed are as follows. First of all, XML is case sensitive. Now, every now and then what will happen is whenever I'm covering XML is that somebody will look at it and go, oh, wow, this is really case sensitive. There are no varying degrees of case sensitivity. It either is or it isn't. XML is case sensitive. You're also going to notice, and we'll see the syntax in a couple of minutes here, that all of your elements must be closed and they must be closed in the correct order. Additionally, our attributes must be a key value pair where that value is contained inside of quotes. Let's take a look at how we can create a sample XML file. Now, what I need is a tool that's going to help me out a little bit with creating that file. And in our case, that's going to be the SQL Server Data Tool. And then from here, I can click File, New, and then File, and then choose 
my XML file. Now what you're going to notice up at the very top is what's known as the XML declaration. Now the XML declaration is 100% optional. It does not need to be there. But if it is there, it needs to be the absolute first thing in the document. Nothing can be before it, including white space. Now, the way that this is going to be structured is a question mark, question mark at the beginning and end. And then you're going to notice that we've got XML. And then the version attribute is required. So version equals 1.0. Then you'll also notice the encoding. And the encoding is optional. In this case, it's set to UTF-8. One little note about the version number. The version is not the version of the document, but rather the version of XML. Let's create a very simple little XML document that can maybe have a list of orders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down just below my XML, and I'm going to type in orders. Now you'll notice that what will happen is the data tools will automatically put in the opposing tag. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But there isn't really a whole lot of magic here per se. Remember, there are no defined elements. What's happening is that Visual Studio knows the rules. Visual Studio, which is really the base for the data tools, knows that if we open up an element, it must be closed. So it's just automatically going to close that for me. Now, I also want you to notice the syntax here, that inside my angle brackets goes the name of the element. And then when we want to close it, it's going to have the exact same name, just with a forward slash over that open or after that open angle bracket. Now, I'm just going to hit a carriage return. And let's put in an order inside of here. And let's say order ID equals. And you'll notice again that the data tools know the rules. So it automatically puts in my quotes for me. So now I can identify what I want that order ID to be. And then inside of here, I can maybe start identifying some additional information, maybe my customer. And then we could give this a name. And then we could go ahead and maybe specify the products that were ordered. And then inside of here, we could go ahead and specify each product. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to show off how we could do a very simple little product here. Let's add in a product ID. Let's go ahead and set that to 1. And then let's set our quantity. And let's set that equal to 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this off. Now, one way that I could close that off is by doing exactly what we've seen before. But another way that we can do this is by saying product, product ID equals 2 quantity equals 7, and then just put in a trailing forward slash like that. That's the way all the cool kids are doing it. Now, there's actually no difference between either line there, either the first product or the second product. In both cases, I've closed them out. Now, the one little catch about that shortcut that we just saw is that that shortcut is only going to work if there's nothing in between the start and the end. So if I put something inside of here, maybe like the word widget, then the shortcut syntax is not going to work. So it only works on what's known as an empty element. An empty element thing is an element with nothing between the start and the end tag.